Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to another booktube SFF babbles topic. I am quite excited about this week's topic because it is about science fiction for beginners and the prompt for this week is to recommend a handful or in my case, a little bit more than a handful of science fiction novels that you think are good for people who are just getting into the genre. In no particular order, here's what I recommend for people who are just dipping their toes into science fiction. There's a reason why the Old Man's War series by John Scalzi is so incredibly popular. It's because it is very, very accessible science fiction that appeals to a broad range of people, so I absolutely have to include that on this list. The first book in the series is called Old Man's War, and it follows the kind of main character of the series, John Perry, as he signs up for the Colonial Defense Force on his 75th birthday. He expects they're gonna do something to him that makes him able to fight as a soldier because he's an old dude now. And then he discovers what humanity's true relationship is with the aliens in the universe. Spoiler alert, it's not pretty. This series is incredibly fast-paced. It has a lot of sarcastic and humorous characters. It's very easy to read, very enjoyable to read, and if you like it, then you might try out some other military science fiction series. Next is Fortune's Pawn by Rachel Bach. This is the first book in her Paradox trilogy, and it follows a female mercenary named Devi. She has really big plans for her career. She eventually wants to get into this coveted elite force, and in order to get ahead on her dream, she signs up for a ship with a very difficult reputation, like one year of service on this ship is equal to five years of service anywhere else. And she joins, strange things happen, she gets to shoot up a whole bunch of stuff, and she does also get a love interest. This is kind of a military science fiction series that has a lot of romance in it, especially in books two and three. Now you know me, I don't really love romance in my science fiction, and I think that's the complaint that some people might have about this one, but if you are used to reading other genres with romance, maybe this is something that you want to see in science fiction. Um, and it is nice to see a female character get to be the badass mercenary type all the way through at the same time that she gets to have a love story. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I don't think I even need to explain this one. I mean, classic questions like what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Why should you always take your towel with you? This is like the original funny wacky makes absolutely no sense science fiction adventure. And if you don't want to read the entire series, you can read the first book just like a standalone. And yes, the book is better than the movie. I don't think either one of them really makes sense though. Planet Fall by Emma Newman is one of my new favorite science fiction novels. I've done an entire review on it, so I will link that. But in short, it's about a human colony on another planet and when all of their secrets start coming out. And it really explores mental illness in this context. The main character who's telling the story um, has a mental illness, and throughout the course of the story, you see the extent of that. It is, I think, a really, really good example of how science fiction can deal with issues like mental illness, like it's not always about the science and the technology and the aliens. There are people at the heart of these stories as well. Older science fiction has a reputation for having pretty flat characters and not doing this stuff very well, and this is the modern day answer to that. So I've mentioned classic science fiction and I want to recommend a couple of titles to you guys. Classic sci-fi, like I said, has a reputation of having pretty bad character development, very flat, one-note characters, the representation of women is usually pretty horrible, but there are a few that I want to quickly mention to you because older science fiction tends to be shorter in my experience, which makes it easier to get through if you're just wanting to dip your toes in, and a lot of the older science fiction authors were really good at explaining science and technology. So a couple that I recommend. Arthur C. Clarke is one of the older science fiction authors I have read, and I think he is really good at explaining science and technology. I've just been pretty impressed at how he describes those things in his stories. My favorite book by him is Rendezvous with Rama. This is um, a classic alien artifact exploration story. It doesn't have good characters at all, but that's not the point. The point is to enter into an alien spaceship, see it come alive as it's heated by the sun, and explain how 
all of the parts of it can work. Dune by Frank Herbert. This one I would really recommend to people who are already reading fantasy. If you are really used to the fantasy genre and you want to cross over into science fiction, Dune has a reputation for being a sci-fi novel written like a fantasy novel. And you probably already know what this book is about because the story is really famous and there is a mini series and a movie about it. Um, it's about the planet of Arrakis, also called Dune, which is the only source of spice, which makes interstellar space travel possible. So it's a very precious commodity and whoever controls the spice literally controls the universe. The Atreides family is sent to take over uh, control and running the planet of Arrakis from their enemies, the Harkonnens. And then it's about Paul Atreides as he starts consolidating power. And, and really it's it's about a power struggle. Dune is also part of a longer series, so if you want more, there is more, but you can absolutely read it as a standalone, and I think many people do. I want to quickly mention Ursula Le Guin. I'm not personally sure how great it is to start with some of her work because even though it's not like hard science fiction sometimes, it can be pretty complex. Le Guin likes to tackle some pretty difficult issues. But if you want to start somewhere, I would suggest the word for world is forest. This is actually a novella. It's not even novel length. It's, it's very short. And I think it has some interesting parallels with the Vietnam War, if you know anything about history. And of course, the Left Hand of Darkness, which I've done a complete review about. This one might be a little bit more challenging because it really does discuss some interesting things. There are a lot of themes and a lot of things you can dig into, but it is beautifully written. And I do know some people who have started reading science fiction with this and it just ignited their love for the genre. I've never mentioned Asimov on my channel before, which is kind of weird, but I guess I'm not a super Asimov fan. A lot of people start reading his books with the Foundation series, and I hate those books. I think they're dry and boring and incredibly dated. So I'm gonna recommend I, Robot instead. This is a collection of a couple of his stories, and they're very easy to read, they're fun, and they will introduce you to his three laws of robotics, which are, they're gonna come up so much in other science fiction novels that you read, so. This and Asimov's work are easy foundational works in the genre to get into. I expect to see this one in a lot of people's recommendations on this topic because it's a newer book. It's had, once again, a huge amount of crossover appeal on booktube for people who don't usually read a lot of science fiction. And why is that? Because this book actually, I think, has a lot of science fictional world building in it. There are a lot of very science moments in it, but the core of the story, the heart of the book, is about people, which makes it very accessible. It is about a crew of people on a spaceship who are building a wormhole between a known space and a planet a long way away where a bunch of angry aliens live. But it's not really about that. It's about tolerance and trust and the relationships between these people and a lot of interspecies relationships. This will really appeal to people who watch television shows like Star Trek or Firefly. And in fact, the book also has kind of that episodic feel to it in the way that each character's story is portrayed and then you move on to the next one. Some people will really like that, some people won't, but it gave me huge, huge Firefly vibes. There is no way I could get through a science fiction video without mentioning my favorite science fiction series of all time, and that's the Vorkosigan series by Lois McMaster Bujold, and I am going to mention it because I think this is a really good place to get into military science fiction because it does have all like the military protocols and parts of it, especially in later books, but the stories, once again, are more universal than that and more easily understood than that beyond just the military. So the ones I'm going to recommend are Shards of Honor and Barayar. Even though these books were published years apart, they're really parts one and two of the same story. This story is about how Cordelia Naismith and Errol Vorkosigan meet, fall in love, get married, have a kid, and get through wars and coup d'etats. And it sets the stage for the entire Vorkosigan series because their son, Miles, is the main character of most of the other books. I would recommend these because it's a great story, it's incredibly readable, it has really well done romance in science fiction. I mean, Errol and Cordelia are one of my favorite romantic pairings of all time. 
But it's also another one where the, the world building in these first two books is not as intense as in later books. So you can kind of ease into it and you can see how uh, even Bujold takes just these seedings of things in these books and then builds on them later. So it's not overpowering. And finally, I want to mention the Company series by Cage Baker. The first book in the series is In the Garden of Eden, and it's a science fiction series about time travel. It does time travel really well. Um, sometime in the future, distant, distant future, uh, someone invents time travel, but it's one way only. Once you go back, you don't come forward. You can't bring people forward into the present day. So they, the company uses time travel to make money by sending people back in time, converting people, contemporary people, into cyborgs, making them gather and take precious artifacts and put them in bunkers, and then they all time travel forward by just living their ordinary lives at a normal pace. And the main character who you're introduced to is Mendoza. Um, she was born in Spain around the time of the Inquisition, and she is taken as a child, turned into a cyborg, and... <laughs> then things happen. Those are all of my recommendations right now for some places to start reading science fiction if you're new to the genre. Um, and if any of you read any of these on my recommendation, you'll have to let me know whether it was a good place to start or not. I will link the BookTube SFF Awards Goodreads group down below, as well as the topic um, for this week's video so that you can find other people's recommendations. And if you have any of your own, leave them on the Goodreads group or in the comments down below. And thank you for watching. I will talk to you again later. Bye.